is Upwatch fam. I am Christian from Theo and Harris, and welcome to Liquor Run. This is my dad. I'm Hotsak Berok. That's what? Roly in, in Basque. <laughs> we are drinking a Basque wine today, and he changed his name. Uh, this is Liquor Run. Uh, Mondays, uh, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, uh, on the Theo and Harris channel, we talk about watches, value in watches, what's going on, and, and, and how to get more than you're paying for. Yes. Fridays, we talk about the same thing, but in wine. Vino. Vino, vino, vino. Yes. What are we drinking today, Dad? I am so pumped up <laughs> I love about this wine. today. <laughs> what are we drinking? Tell me. We're drinking Chacolí from Basque countries, yep. north northeastern Spain. Yep. And this is this wine is a hell of a lot of it's fun. It's a lot of fun. Let's do a quick wristwatch yeah. check before okay. we get into it. You are wearing, I mean, the most like summer awesome, you know, watch. I mean, gold this gold is, Rolex date just on a strap. I mean This is the gold date just. That yeah. is yeah. that's an awesome, awesome watch. Yeah. I love yeah. it. I, mean, I am wearing a watch that is actually it was listed uh, on Tuesday for sale on the on the shop at theowenhouse.com. Uh this is a Juvenia chronograph, three registers. Uh, it reminds me a lot of a galley. I don't know if you've ever seen those before, but steel case, steel kind of dial uh, blue steel I think this watch is stunning I don't know what you think I, I, lo I love it I love it on that strap yeah too. it's, it's, it's a kind of like brown well. ostrich yes yeah Lovely. but uh, but that's it great watches great wine let's get into uh, the wine so let's get into the wine uh, this is a grape you probably have never heard of there's a wine you may never have heard of Chacolí this comes from Basque country in Spain the the, the grape is Ondarabi Suri Never. Which means white Ondarabi. Okay. There's also an Ondarabi Belta, which means black wow. uh, Ondarabi. This grape predominantly is grown in Basque country, Spain. So there's a, there's three areas: uh, Getaria, Alava, and there's another uh, another area. What name eludes me, yeah. but, but doesn't matter. No. Uh, the principal regions really are Getaria and Alava. This one is particularly from Alava, but let's talk about. Boss country first. For a quick question though, yes. you, your your two names, the, the black and white, were, and white. They were Suri. Not, okay, but that was that's not Spanish. It's not Spanish, but it's in Spain. It's in Spain. It's an autonomous region in Spain. They fought really hard for their own independence. They have their own culture. They have their own DNA. Wow. They're not necessarily. They're not Spaniards. They're they're Basque. Yeah. They, it's very like French as well because even in southern France, there's Basque region, right? Because. Um, Basque Spain butts up to uh, to um, like Bayonne, to the right? Bayonne yeah. on the other side. You've got Bayonne, yeah, yeah. yeah, and you and you've got the the Pyrenees Mountains yeah. that that uh, that that uh, you know that they share. Yeah. Okay, and then you've got on the other side, on the Spanish side, yeah. you've got the Cantabrian Mountains that that uh, that protect this region. But uh, but make no mistake here, if if you're a foodie and if you love wine, you love this area. Yeah. You love get that. You love San Sebastian. We, we were yeah. Everywhere you go, Bilbao, it is a food lover's dream, yeah. paradise. It's their birthright, and it's not fair. <laughs> it's not, it, it is not fair. Uh, you, you guys, uh, you and mom took us, uh, when I graduated high school, right? That was yes. like, as soon as I graduated, we were basically in San Sebastian like the next couple weeks. Yes. I think the 18th we left, something yes. like, just like that. And oh my God. God, that was one of the best vacations. I mean, we would we would get up, we would go to the beach, go for go for what was it pinchos? Pinchos. Right? It's like tapas or chiquetti, depending on where you're from. But pinchos. We go back on the beach, get a little drunk, go go to sleep, wake up. We would get off the beach at like seven o'clock, yes. eight o'clock, go back shower and go out drinking and eating more. This is, I mean, paradise. This is food paradise. It's food porn on steroids. It's food porn on steroids. Uh, everyone's a, a food porn star. Yeah, and everyone's naked on the beach. Everyone's <laughs> naked on the beach. And everyone's drinking chocolate. Yep. So now let's get into uh, let's get into the wine. So this uh, this wine is an acidic wine. The grapes are grown on these real steep trellises. Uh, you recall yep. seeing them. Yep. The the Atlantic Ocean, the Bay of Biscay, just you know really butts up to the vineyards. Yep. It's a very damp area, mm -hmm. as you recall. They, mm -hmm. It's very green, very yeah. lush. So they. I mean, it, it rains basically all of the off season, right? And it it's does. Very, very heavy rain. Very, and, very yeah. heavy. Uh, and so what they do is they they take the grapes, and they push them up into a canopy style to keep so that the air rushes through and keeps the humidity down. Otherwise, wow. it'll just rot all the grapes. Wow. So it's a it's an innovative way of 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 growing the grapes. But it's really, it's a necessity. You okay. have to do Otherwise, it that way. Otherwise, you'll have no wine. You'll have no wine. Okay. But enough of that. Yik yak. Let's, let's give it a uh, shot. Let's do. Have now, you had this wine, this particular one before? I have had that. Uh, Chacolí hasn't been available in America all that long. Maybe 10 years. So okay. it's a recent revelation here to America. Okay. 
you see it in New York City in some of the Spanish restaurants because the chefs figured out that, right, they, man, no, this, this is, is great. crazy stuff. It's crazy stuff. It's humble stuff. What this is 13 bucks? 13 bucks. Thir- $13. So we're, talk- we're talking, you know, especially for liquor... Relatively very, very, very uh, inexpensive, affordable wine yes. uh, with a lot of character so far. We I don't know what it tastes like no, yet, you don't. at least for the you video, don't. but this is a very serious wine for $12, 13 bucks. The taste will be unmistakable. Okay, so... Uh, How do we pour this? Yeah, out? exactly. So I remember sitting at the table and this just like really just charming, kind of like badass, obviously like native waiter, comes over, opens up the bottle, right? Like really slick, like everybody else, and then takes the cork out, puts it on the table with a knife, and just cuts and cuts and cuts. And I said, why is he cutting the cork? I'd never seen something like that before. Sure as shit, he pops it right back in, and he pours. And he pours. But he pours the coolest way you could possibly imagine. Can you show the geeks? Let's, let's do it. <laughs> show the geeks. Okay, so that is the most fun way to pour, right? <laughs> that is the coolest way to pour wine. Right? And, and when you do it like nonchalantly, you just seem like such a fucking right. cool Spaniard. Absolutely. So, okay, why these glasses? Tell me. Because where did you buy these glasses, first off? We bought these uh, glasses in, in, in San Sebastian. <laughs> right? So this, is, the, tra- this is a traditional glass yeah. for Chacolí. Yeah. It's no pretense, no BS. Okay, this yep. this is what you have at home. Yep. And when you're pounding pinchos. Yeah. I, I I I love I love the I guess the I don't know approachable attitude of these glasses. It just seems so home. It just seems so just cool and you know and unpretentious. Yeah. I love that. So now look at the color. Tell me what tell me what you see. So the color actually uh, very unmistakable. Uh, it, it's it's that pale yellow greenish color, yeah, and that's exactly what we know about this grape. It tends to be a little bit on the greenish yellow uh, yeah. hue. Uh, as far as the nose, it, it, just a lot of citrus fruit, yep. okay? I mean, that's the aroma that I'm picking up right yeah. now, okay? Is it more of a lemon or more of an orange? A more lemon. A more lemon. Okay, mm-hmm. cool. Yeah. But let's drink. Let's do it. So, agu. Agu! <laughs> uh, you can drink this all afternoon. I mean, on a day like this, this is February 20th, and it feels like it's early May. It is. It, this cuts right through your palate. We only bought uh, one bottle and we made bottle. a big mistake. Yes. Because I could sit here for the next two hours and just drink this and just talk about life. It's 12.5% <laughs> alcohol. It's low in alcohol. It is so refreshing. Yep. We're drinking this right uh, now in February. Imagine what this will be uh, like in March, April, May, no. June. This is a killer wine. And your friends will think you're a badass when you pour and you do this. Yeah, stuff. yeah. And you pour, you're putting out wonderful little, you know, Call it appetizers, call it pinchos, call it yeah. tapas, call it chiquetti, yeah. whatever language, it doesn't matter. It's just the coolest way. I mean, yeah. you know, I feel like, especially, to me, this is a leisure wine. Right? I think this mm-hmm. wine goes hand in hand, at least in, in my understanding yes. of it, with just leisure. Throwing together some really easy, you know, foods, and we'll talk about that in a second. You know, cutting open a core, cutting, it's just fun, it's yes. just hanging out. This is, you know, it's just fun freaking wine, and that's why I love it. This epitomizes life. Yep, it really, you know, right? Especially... Up there up and there, the way yeah. they live and in yeah. Europe and stuff like that, it's just very much so about enjoying time. Not so serious, not mm. so boring. So it's fun. It's good. You know, last week we talked about the Sauvignon Blanc and you mentioned something of a bitter, bitter, yep. you know, and I thought a little bit about what you're saying, bitter. To me, I find a little bit of a, a slight bitter note on the, on the back. On the back. You know what? It's like grapefruit. Oh, grapefruit. shit. You're right. I love when he does that. It just dawned on me. I love like, when he does that. There's a grapefruit in the back. Yes. Yep. I've tasted it like right in the in the back. But yep. I yeah. got it. Grapefruit. It, it, 100%. That's the beauty yep. of this. But uh, all jokes aside, it's a better tasting grapefruit because it has the balance. Mm-hmm. Whereas when you just eat grapefruit, it's just very grapefruity. You right. know, it just tastes exactly like grapefruit. This has more of a round. It rounds the edges. It does. You know what I mean? Yeah. So this is actually a much more enjoyable version of grapefruit, yeah. in my opinion. <laughs> I think yeah. the grapefruit tasted like this. Yeah. Uh, let's have some more. Let's have some more. This wine is so integral to the culture, to the food that yep. they're eating there. And and we talked a little bit before about how serious these folks take their food. Yep. Even the most pedestrian food is of the highest quality. Yep. Uh, there's so much care and love. Yep. They're artisans. They, they, they are masters of food. I was talking about this the other day uh, in an interview I was doing. Uh, which you guys can actually see on, 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 on the YouTube channel. But talking about, you know, people that execute things like Lung and Zone. Right? Not to make everything about a watch, but I love the Lung and Zone philosophy. Whether you're buying a Saxonia, their lowest model, mm-hmm. or you're buying a Tourbillon, 
it's finished the same. It's not the same in construction or what you're getting or what you're what you're buying in, in mass, but it's they're all finished really well. So I feel like in that same like food porn philosophy, whether you are having a, a you know a, an undesirable cut of meat, you know in in you know uh, beans and all that stuff, or you're having like blood sausage, or you're having a beautiful piece of shrimp. It's executed yeah, well. It's a great point. Like really, really yeah. well. Yes. <laughs> you know, it doesn't have to be the equal quality of thing. Yes. But they're doing it for you right both ways. Yes. And that to me is just so, it, like, it just impacts me so much. Yes. That people can care about vastly different things just as much. I love that. We experienced that whether you were eating at, you know, Bernardo Chea or Murayas where yeah. we ate twice. Yeah. Or you're eating at Arzac, yep. the, the, the pinnacle of gastronomy, yep. of Spanish gastronomy yep. in in, uh, in Basque country. Yep. It didn't matter. They take everything very seriously. The precision. Everyone eats the highest quality there, regardless of price point. Mm -hmm. And I think that's where the, yep. the real big tie-in is into your into what you preach yep. with watches. Yep, absolutely. At, 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 at um, you know, three hundred dollars. You know, if you can snag a piece, you are getting a legitimately cool piece. Yep. Is it the same thing as a three thousand dollar Rolex? No. And and to say otherwise would be a lie. Right. But. Damn, are you packing a lot of punch in that right. 300 bucks? You know, we packed a hell of a lot of punch $13. today. $13. So now what would you be eating? Tell us what you ate. Tell us what we ate in San Sebastian when we were drinking this wine. We ate a lot of seafood, yep. a lot of fish, yep. a lot of shellfish, um, on the grill, yep. fried, beautiful prawns. Yep. Uh, we ate cheese. And it, uh, we ate a cheese called Idia Sabal. Okay, so that that is that cheese is 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 local to that area, mm -hmm. and uh, the classic way that they have it is they they slice it, they'll give it to you with walnuts, and they'll put apple jam. Oh, so you put those you three see things how that together. Would work together. Oh, it yeah. is an incredible blend of textures and flavor. Yeah, and total simple. I mean, simplicity. And simplicity. And, yeah, right. You that. can do that at home. Yeah. Uh, but I remember the fried fish as well. The, what were they? What were they having? Um, it was a fried cod, right? It was so a lot of a lot of uh, a lot of cod, a lot of cod cheeks. Yeah, they call yeah. cocochas. Cocochas, yeah. So yeah. it was cocochas, and what cocochas was the other the cod cheeks? Yeah, and the other big one over there was chipirones, which is which is like baby squid. There you go. Delicious. I mean, really, really good. And you'd go from place to place. One really cool thing about the pinchos bars. Uh, is the honor system. <laughs> they charge you based on the toothpick. Based on how many you say you ate. <laughs> right. Imagine. Operative word, how many you say. How many you say. You, you're, you're, you're three quarters of the way tooted or time and a half tooted, you know, at, at 1 a.m. and then somebody asks you, how many did you eat? <laughs> Four. four. Four? I think I have four of them. <laughs> they were really good though. But they didn't count the 32 that I had in, in my your pocket. pocket. What a great experience. I love this wine. This is such a beautiful wine. The philosophy behind it. Thank you for picking this one up. Once again, $13. And what was the name? This is Charmant Chocolat. Beautiful. Okay, find it. It's available in America. It's widely available. And at $13, I you mean, can't, you can't beat it. This is the ultimate leisure wine right now, you know, and, and even more so in a couple months. It's a, it's a beautiful, beautiful thing. Daddy O, thank you for coming on Liquor right. Wine again. Pleasure. Uh, this was absolutely beautiful. <laughs> This is awesome. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you guys so much for watching Liquor Run. Uh, I am Christian from Theo and Harris, and you are Rolly from Theo and Harris. I uh, see you guys again next week.